Welcome back. This is John Sadak. While you were away, we had a mound visit, and it looks like they might be making a change. Yep, yep, they're going to the lefty in the bullpen. It's Southpaw Sizzle. Here comes Stephen Offenbaker. Welcome into the Lefty in the Bullpen. I'm your host, Stephen Offenbaker. This is the Lefty in the Bullpen brought to you by the Locked on Reds podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, today, we've got a great show for you. Uh, if you are not uh, on Twitter a lot, you may be missing out on what uh, our guest has been teasing for a while now. And uh, if you grew up, watching Reds baseball in the 70s, the 80s, or the 90s, uh, chances are you spent a lot of time down at Riverfront Stadium, later Synergy Field. And uh, this is one of those stadiums that wore the label of cookie cutter, but it never really felt like that. And our guest today is putting together a movie to basically bring – the old girl back to life uh, for me, Riverfront stadiums where I saw my first baseball game. Uh, you know, I like with many of you experienced the, the wonder and, and the thrill of, of walking into that stadium for the very first time and just being overwhelmed by the, the sights and the, the green of the turf and, you know, just the special place that was Riverfront stadium. So we're going to talk about that today, and we've also got an exclusive preview of, of the film, the, the prologue from the film. We're going to show right here today, uh, the first few minutes uh, of the open. I'm really excited about that. Uh, our guest today, putting all this together for you, uh, is the one and only Cam Miller. You know Cam from all of his work at the Reds Hall of Fame and all of the exciting, excellent, historical not only Reds, but historical Cincinnati Covington uh, information that he puts out on his Twitter feed at Cam Miller Films. And uh, if you're not following him on Twitter, you are really missing out. As soon as this episode is over, get over there right now. Give him a follow because uh, he never disappoints with the content that he puts out. So let's bring him in right now. I am so excited to welcome in Cam Miller of Cam Miller Films. Cam, I'm so excited about this. Thank I you, my so friend. Excited. I am excited as well. It's really good to be with you this morning, this afternoon. What what time is? I've been working on a film. I don't know what day it is, what time it is, what year it is. <laughs> I'm just I'm just happy that it looks like you're still eating and you have a shirt on. So uh, you know I'm you good. you checked all the boxes today. <laughs> Got the coffee. I'm still I'm still kicking, man. Well, let's let's dive right into talking about this project. Uh, when you've been really you've really been hyping this thing on your social media feeds, and for those of us of a certain age, oh, I just had a birthday, Cam, forty five years old. Uh, That's right. Uh, those of us of a certain age, um, you are really tugging at some heartstrings with this project. And uh, let's just talk about for a minute how did this come to be? How did how did you come to be working on? Uh, a, a project about Riverfront Stadium? Well, it actually started many years ago. Uh, I did an exhibit film uh, for the Reds Hall of Fame. It was called Reds of the 80s. And it was before the renovations, uh, the Hall of Fame. And it was a little corner and we had a monitor up and it, I, I wanted to do something different because I was, I, I was thinking this is Riverfront. Crossley, it's a little harder to do kind of graphics because you only have so much to work with. Their scoreboard was, of course, wooden and, and old, but Riverfront had a really cool scoreboard. I'm like, why don't we make this monitor like the scoreboard for the exhibit? So I started to tinker with making um, some of the old graphics from Riverfront, which, you know, thankfully we had a lot of graphics um, that were videotaped by the Reds way back in the day. And I was able to restore those, recreate those. And we used those a lot for the exhibit. So we were really happy with it, but I was always wanting more. I'm like, this is cool, but I want I want to do more about this. Riverfront Stadium, there's, like you said, it's just, there's something about it. It's it's our park. So time passed, and as the renovations went on with the uh, Reds Hall of Fame, we decided, well, we're going to do ballpark films, little five-minute films of the history of each ballpark, which I've been working on um, for several years now. But uh, I was in the thick of my film on Finley and Western, which is the Crosley Field uh, uh, film. And it was going to be a little bit longer of a documentary. And we were going to show it and have a premiere in the uh, Red Hall of Fame theater. But 
we decided to switch switch things around and go with Riverfront because of the 20 years that it has been since it was demolished in 2002. So I already had a lot of the legwork done, but the more I started getting into it, and it's like a puzzle, you put it on the table and you're like, okay, here's the corner pieces. Okay, this background matches this. And then it starts coming together and it became more emotional for me to do because of the fact that I grew up there, because of the fact that it got such a bad rap. I mean, I will never forget tearing up when it was being imploded while people around me were cheering and I couldn't understand that. And making this film has made me realize that it was such, such a beautiful place and it had a life of its own. And my, my goal with this is to give it the proper respect that the park deserves. And I think we've, we've been enough, enough years have passed now and I think it's time that we do that. So this film came together rather quickly. Um, again, had all the pieces, but putting it together has just been an incredible journey, Steve. And I can't tell you how emotional it has been for me to make. You know, when you think about Riverfront Stadium, when you think about, and you know, I don't think that ever anyone <clears throat> truly embraced that whole Synergy Field naming of the place. Right. You know, it was always Riverfront. It will always be Riverfront. But when you think about that stadium in that place, you know, you can't do it without instantly being taken to the big red machine you can't do it without instantly thinking about barry larkin and eric davis and jose rio you know this is the place that championships were made and when you're talking about making a film for a stadium where you're dealing with a franchise that has not really had a lot of success since leaving there uh, where do you begin where do you begin the process even of picking what you're going to include and what you're going to talk about and the memories that are going to make it versus the memories that are not because it's more than just championships tom browning's perfect game occurred there uh tom Seaver's no hitter you know you've got all of these things what what gets included and what doesn't i wanted to make sure that we were embracing the ballpark that became the foundation Let's talk about the ballpark. And it just so happens that the most successful period of Reds history happened in this place. It's it's not a coincidence. The teams were built specifically for this ballpark by Bob Housem, and it ushered in a new era. And you can argue about whether that was right or wrong, but for us in Cincinnati, it was fantastic. We soaked it up. When I started this, I, I actually made the decision that I don't want to include a lot of highlights. We have seen Tom Browning's perfect game. We have seen Tom Seaver throw his no-hitter. We have seen the world championships that were won, the teams that were great. We know about the big red machine. But what about the home that they lived in? Let's get down to the nuts and bolts of that home because, it again, when it was built, it was state of the art. It was just an unbelievable new experience for Cincinnati. And some people didn't want it because they were in love with Crosley. And I understand that. But when I started digging deeper and realizing that this stadium, a ballpark on the river, had been talked about since the 20s. And then it really picked up steam in the master plan in 1948. And then with the threat of the Reds moving in the 50s and 60s, it really picked up steam. And then, of course, with the promise of a Cincinnati football franchise coming, uh, it really, really, it, it came to be. And it was built with a purpose. It was built for a reason. It wasn't supposed to be a pretty ballpark. It, that wasn't the intention. It wasn't supposed to be Crosley Field Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. That wasn't the idea. It was to build something that was function, functionable for fans to get in, enjoy a game, and get out. And it set the standard. So making this film, I wanted that to be the star. The star isn't Eric Davis or Pete Rose or Tony Perez or Tom Seaver or Tom Browning. It is the park. How did it get made? What went into making it? Who made it? What were some of the memories there? And they're not always memories of championships. There's memories of, I went there as my first game. I got to see the field and it blew me away. I became a baseball fan. I got to get the, the top six tickets because they were cheap. And I got to go up there for three, four dollars and watch a baseball game. It was mind blowing. Or I went down there and I could smell the cotton candy and the pretzels and it made me a Reds fan. And that's the generation we're living in. People that went to Riverfront and grew up in there. Crosley is awesome and I love it. But those fans are not, there's not as many around anymore. We are in this wheelhouse of Riverfront fans that are starting to feel that nostalgia 20 years on. So I, it was important to me, so important to me that I made the film about the stadium 
everything else around it that happened is awesome believe me but that stadium there's something about it that's magical and when i go down there to do some filming um at the park in the parking garage underneath the moorline logger house where the home plate is marked you feel it it is field of dreams-esque and i am not one of those people that believes in ghosts or i'm not one of those but i can feel that energy and i can hear that crowd in my head and it really inspired me to continue with this film and to make it about the ballpark. You know, I remember, and I'm sure you probably do too, and, and we'll, we can talk about that right now. Um, I remember my first trip to Riverfront Stadium. I must have been four years old, five years old. And I remember being overwhelmed by the green. Uh, it was a day game. We were there early in the day. The sun was shining. Uh, and just the green of that AstroTurf uh, that people don't understand because, you know, it, it, it's a whole different, even fields now that are turf, it is a whole different kind of turf that you're looking at versus what was in Riverfront Stadium, you know, in the 80s. Uh, and, and that green, I have never encountered that color of green ever again. And it's just seared into my head. And, you know, you 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 file that away and it was it was a sensory almost a sensory overload at the time being this little kid walking into that stadium for the first time and that's exactly right and there are two things that people have talked about with me in making this film and even before that one they remember the squishy concrete joints that rubber joints that you walked on mm -hmm. and that was it's brought up daily number two was the expansive green field and there's a reason for that. You didn't see anything like that. If you went to Fenway or Wrigley, awesome. But you're going to see brown spots and it's grass. And you know what grass looks like when you walk out your front door and see it in your lawn. When you go to Riverfront Stadium, which is the Roman Coliseum of baseball in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and you first see that, there's, there's this anticipatory tease of walking or going up the escalator and hearing the Welcome to Riverfront Stadium loop and smelling the smells. And then when you walk in, you're like, you're first of all, you're just amazed the size of it. And then when you walk in, the usher takes your ticket, you walk in and it's dark and it's damp. And the first thing you see through the portal is this unbelievable, magnificent color of green that you have never seen in your life. And it absolutely takes your breath, breath away. It did for me as a four-year-old in 1978, going to see the Reds as the big red machine was kind of fading away. I went into this ballpark in the red seats and looked down on this this field and was blown away it didn't look like that in television and remember we didn't see a lot of home games back in the day because they didn't show them on television so you had to go to the park to experience baseball and that green and you're exactly right if that's a, that's a great way to put it it's sensory overload and i think that's why people remember it so much sure there were some bad teams in the 80s sure we didn't win a championship every year but you remember everything about that park the smells the sights how everything felt the, the seats it's it's just a different experience. And I really hope that people take away from this film something that, oh, that's right. You know, Great American Ballpark's great, but man, wasn't Riverfront fun? Well, Cam, we've got a, a special treat here, and I thank you so much for, for partnering up with us to do this. We've got... I think the first three minutes of the film, is that what, why don't you give us the, the, as they say in the business, the setup here, Cam, tell us what we're about to watch. Okay, well, this is the prologue to the film. Um, it'll open up with this before it goes into, uh, three parts, which will be the stadium, uh, the building, the stadium, and then the farewell. So it's a three, three parts of the film, but the prologue kind of opens it up and sets the stage for what you're about to see. And, uh, I hope that you enjoy it. And I'm glad my friend to exclusively premiere it here with you. All right, folks. Well, here for your viewing pleasure brought to you by cam miller films we have the prologue to riverfront remembered a film by cam miller She wasn't built to be charming. She wasn't configured to fit inside a neighborhood like her predecessor, Crosley Field. 
Riverfront Stadium was designed to function. A multi-purpose machine, her concrete and steel body bolted down along the Ohio River, sharing the banks with warehouses, factories, skyscrapers. She had a job to do, and she did it well. But machines don't last forever, and eventually we deem them out of date and find something shiny and new to serve our ever-changing purposes and landscapes. After 32 years, after 2,576 games, and after 64,650,533 fans walked through her turnstiles, the time had come to say goodbye. Baseball. Been in my life for 58 years now. But these past 30 years right here have been the greatest of my career. And when this place is knocked down December the 29th, those memories will not leave this area. They'll always be here. And for those of us that were lucky enough to have our breath taken away by her majestic size, our eyes widened when we first saw her expansive green field as we made our way to find our plastic seats of blue, green, yellow, or red. We are forever grateful that she let us be a part of her lifespan. We may not remember the final scores or whether the Reds won or lost, but we remember the scoreboard's glow. We can smell the damp concrete and sports service treats. We can feel the rumble in our chest as we clapped our hands and stomped our feet. She is forever with us and we will always have that stadium along the Ohio Riverfront. My goodness, Cam, talk about tugging at some heartstrings. Uh, I don't even know where to start on this. I think uh, I think from that, the thing that hit me the hardest was Nuxie, was the, the clip of Joe Nuxall at the farewell. Uh, because Nuxie knew. He knew we would be talking about this someday, and he knew we would be revisiting it. And you can tell from the speech that he gave and, and the comments that he made, especially if you watch the, that extended clip, Separately, if you watch his his farewell at Riverfront Stadium, he knew the special place that this stadium held in the hearts of Reds fans uh, far and wide. Absolutely. And that clip of him, it's where I started. Like when I first started making this film, I played that clip on a loop, the audio of it. It constantly reminded me. I knew I was going to include it in the film somewhere. I wasn't sure exactly where, if it was going to be at the end um, when we talk about the farewell or if it was going to be at the beginning in the prologue. But I kept playing that clip when I was doing other edits because it was such motivation because you're right. He talks about it even being, a, if the clip plays out, about it being a parking lot. It's like if it's a parking lot, you know, we'll come here. And he talks about Pete Rose, of course, which at that time was, you know, controversial. But um, you're absolutely right. He knew his his place in history he knew that we would be talking about this and the thing that got me the most about it was the memories are going to stay here it was about the memories the ghosts of riverfront were always going to be at that spot we can talk about it in the suburbs we can talk about it when we're a great american but when we're right there in that parking garage and you go down there i'm telling you you feel the energy and i hope that my film and working with the reds hall of fame we, we are able to do something to better give that spot a, 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 a prop. Maybe, maybe we paint the parking lot green, the infield. Maybe we put markers at first, second, and third instead of just at home plate because that's the actual location. That's the spot. Now, I know that there's a first base in the Moore Line House, but it's up. It would be pretty much where the blue seats, you know, it's, it's raised. But to have that parking lot 
I don't want to say a tourist attraction, but to give people an idea of where things were and also the foul poles. We could put maybe replica foul poles out there. We need to make sure that we keep the history of Riverfront alive instead of just buried in a parking garage somewhere where there's a home plate. I'm thankful that's there, but we need to do more. And I hope that this film kind of spearheads that movement. I love that you included a lot of the the aerial shots and the and the wide shots of the stadium. When I was a kid driving down from Springfield, you know, you'd get to the town, you're heading towards Pete Rose Way, and you would reach Cincinnati and you would see the Roebling and you would see Riverfront. And the second you saw that blue paint on that bridge, the excitement in your gut just took off because you knew you were almost there. And you see the stadium and you just get more and more and more amped up. And, and I swear to this day, flying into Cincinnati, driving into the city, when I see that blue bridge, I still get that, that, that racing of my heart and that anticipation of being in the city. You know, Cincinnati, and I've told you when we've hung out, is you know, one of my favorite places in the world. And I, I tend to flit around a little bit. I've seen some places, Cam, and still I enjoy the most just being in the city and, and, and being connected to the place. And so uh, to have this film coming to, to see that, that prologue um, that really kind of hit me, right? Just, it got me. So congratulations on that. Um, I'm, I'm super excited to see this film. And I know that uh, all the arrangements have not been made yet, but can you kind of share with us what you're thinking, uh, what your intention is moving forward as far as where are we going to see this film? When are we going to see this film? Uh, what can people expect? Well, um, the premiere will be at the Reds Hall of Fame. We're just not quite there on the date yet. We're really close. I'm hoping that by next week, I will know. I would like to do it at the end of June, and if not, the beginning of July. Um, there will be a premiere, and we're going to try to put together some sort of event where we have the uh, seats from Riverfront in the theater, so you can actually sit down in some of the seats at Riverfront, have some guests there to do a Q&A after the film, um, and I will as well be doing a Q&A. Just a one-time event where we have this premiere, and the film will live in the Hall of Fame later. We're not sure exactly how that's going to work, but I definitely want to be able to put this online following the premiere so that people like yourself, people that are not exactly in the city proper can find a place for this film. They, they want to watch it. It's for the people. That's why I did this. I, I mean, I'm not doing this because I make George Lucas money or Steven Spielberg money. I do it what? because I know it's hard to believe in my beautiful Chateau de Miller on top of Mount Dayton, Kentucky. I, I make enough to keep the lights on, my friend. But I want this film to live in people's minds it's important that people see this and i wanted to reach as many people as possible and of course the best way to do that these days is through youtube or online um, wherever the case may be and they're able to watch it on their phones they can watch it when they have a lunch break um that's that's my my plan for it so hopefully soon um, we will have more details and i will be sharing them on my uh, twitter handle as we get closer to having a set date finally <laughs> All right. He is Cam Miller of Cam Miller Films. You need to be following him on Twitter. That's at Cam Miller Films. It's very easy. Cam, the, the YouTube feed is the same, correct? At Cam Miller Films? That is correct. So, folks, head over there. Subscribe to those feeds on social media. There's lots of great content on the Cam Miller Films YouTube page. If you haven't spent some time there watching uh, the stuff that Cam has put out, I encourage you to do that uh, in while you're waiting for this film to release. Lots of great stuff, lots of great pot projects. And, and I know that you have tons of great stuff in the pipeline, Cam. So people need to be following you so they don't miss out on it. Uh, and on Twitter, if only to see the walks will haunt animation from Riverfront every the single best. time the, the bullpen best. comes into the game. So I think that's a good spot to go ahead and wrap it up for this edition of the Lefty in the Bullpen. Cam, thanks so much for being here. Uh, do appreciate you stopping by. And for you listeners, uh, click subscribe down below. You're watching us on YouTube. Uh, make sure you're also subscribed to the Locked on Reds podcast where we will be in your feed uh, every single day bringing you all of the Reds news and information you need to stay current on our beloved Cincinnati Reds. Uh, until next time, I'm your host of the Lefty in the Bullpen and your co-host of Locked on Reds, Stephen Offenbaker. I'll be talking to you again real soon. See you next time.